What's up everyone, you got Mind Circus here with you and another Guild Wars 2 new player tip. And today we're going to be taking a look at part 2 of API Keys. But before we get started, if you are new to the channel, new to Guild Wars 2, or just haven't done so yet, I am currently farming likes and subscribes in an effort to build this channel. And if you would be so kind as to hit me up with one of those down below the video, that would be super appreciated. And with that little shameless bit of self-promotion out of the way, let's take a look at our subject for today, which is part two of API keys. If you were with me for part one, uh, part one went over how we get our API keys and a couple of small things that we can do with them. Here in part two, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of more advanced things that we can do with our API keys that will really make our life easier, especially for newer players of the game. So let's get into that. So our first step here with the API key part two video is to get into gw2crafts.net and there will be a link in the description down below. This website is probably the fastest way for you to max out your crafting. And one of the best ways that you use this is with your API key that's going to show you how to get to the maximum level of crafting as quick and cheap as possible. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. This is the front page of gw2crafts.net. And what we do here is we go to fast guides. From fast guides, we're going to choose the discipline that we are looking to max. And in this case, for the sake of argument, we will go to Huntsman. If we take a look at this page, we can scroll it down. And what this does is actually lays out how much of everything that we need. And then it gives us a path to making things that will quickly and efficiently max out our crafting skill. But one of the things we can do with our API key in here is actually just paste it in here. All right, so let's click on that right now. Okay, and we can actually see that with what's in my, uh, within my, uh, my bank here, my final cost is actually going to be significantly lower. And this really is the benefit of it. Now, if you're in the situation where 27 or 20 gold sounds like a lot of money to you and a new player, that's uh, absolutely understandable. We're going to get into something in a little while that may help you find a little money on your account that you may not know you had. And it really is that simple. If we follow this list step by step, we'll be able to max out our crafting discipline. And using the API key will give us a very deep discount into getting these things done. Now I'm going to show you the granddaddy king of all uses of your ABI key. And this is GW2 efficiency. I wouldn't be scared away by the name. G GW2 efficiency is probably one of the most interesting, amazing, useful sites that you can have. And we're going to go through a few uses for that right now. Now, the first thing when we get to GW2 efficiency is we've got a link up here that says log in. We don't have to do that. Okay. All we have to do is go to this place that says API keys. When we click on that, it says add a new API key and we will paste our API key in here and save our API key. Now that we've got that saved, we've got the ability to manipulate some data on our account in some really, really interesting ways. From here, what we'll do is we'll go to account. And once I've pulled up the account here, you can actually see some pretty interesting stats already. This is my account value and you can see there's a leaderboard and my ranking among the other people using GW2 efficiency. There's a lot of different features here and it can be a little overwhelming. I'm going to get into three or four different things here that you might want to use this site for. The first is let's pretend that I'm in the situation where I have a very expensive item that I have lost somewhere on my account. Now, if you're like me, I have many, many characters. I lose things on them all the time and sometimes it gets really scary. And what I'll do here is I'll look at this little empty window here that says search for an item name on your account. Now I have an item called an endless upgrade extractor that lets me pull runes and sigils out of any item whenever I want. And if I now look for endless, I can actually see here that my endless upgrade extractor is found on arsonist Poshi, my uh, little Esra elementalist, and I can actually click on her 
and bring up some information about her here, including her gear and some other details that I want. And that's a really, really, really powerful thing that you can do. Now, let's say we're in the scenario where what we want to do is get some gold. And a good example of this might be that you're looking to get your griffin for the first time. And that is a 250 gold gate. And sometimes that can sound like a lot of money. The first thing I'm going to do is when we look at the links along the bottom here, I'm going to go to my bank. And if I click on my bank here at this point, I've got the option to sort my bank in different ways. And one of the ways I can actually sort this is by price. When I sort this by price, I can take a look at the value of some of the things that are in my bank in the game. Okay, I can see that I have a precursor here. Wow, I didn't know I had that. No, really. Um, but I've got 90 gold sitting on that. I've got a black line skin that I've been sitting on for quite a while that's worth 72 gold. I've got 61 gold sitting in plus eight agony infusions on my account. So I've got the ability to quickly look at what the items in my bank are worth and potentially sell those on the TP if the need be. Now, another option very similar to that and where we might find a lot of gold that we didn't know we had is to go under here under material storage. Under material storage, once this is loaded, we'll do this the same way. We'll sort this by price. And now that I've sorted this by price, I can see the value of some of the things that are in my material storage. Now, if you don't know how to add things to your material storage, there is a video for that on my channel. I will link that down below. Um, highly suggest you get into the, uh, into the habit of using it, just dropping your things in there. But we can see that if I need to make a little bit of gold quickly, I have 48 mystic coins worth 109 gold so there I have just found some gold that I may not have known that I had one of the other things here I can take a look I've got 12 gold sitting here and just engraved totems that's a quick pickup if I want to sell uh, sell a little bit and make a little bit of money back so that is another way that we're gonna find money on our account maybe that we didn't know we had now, one of the last things that I will bring your attention to on GW2 Efficiency, and, and let's be clear, there is so much more you can do with this tool. I just want to make you clear of the absolute basics on it. But when you're getting started, you may run into the situation where you want to start customizing your characters more. And one of the best ways to do that is through dies. Now, dies when you're buying them off the trading post can be a real real hassle and one of the best things you can do for the character customization of your account is go and just buy all the cheap dies that are available and that you can afford easily and get those unlocked on your account so if we take a look at gw2 efficiency here and we look at dies and we click on dies we can see all the dies that are available in the game and some of these are obviously very expensive but if I show only the locked dies, okay, and I sort these, and we change that, we can start looking at the cheapest dies that are available to us. Now, if you're a new player starting out, you're going to see a lot of dies in here that are available for copper and silver. And I highly suggest you go and you just unlock all those as quickly as possible because having a good palette of dies is one of the best things you can do for the fashion on your account. And there we go. So I can come in here now and if I want this die, I know the name of it that is, or that is still locked to my account that I don't have yet. And I can go ahead and unlock that by buying it off the TP and then account binding it. And so there you have it. That is part two of API keys. I'm hoping you found this really valuable. I know that when I first got started, I kind of... I was a little intimidated by the prospect of the API key. What is it? How do I use it, etc. And I was a little intimidated by the, uh, you know, the idea of giving a string of text to these websites. Keep in mind that for GW2 efficiency and for GW2 crafts, there's no need to sign up for an account if you don't want to. You can just plug in that API key. It'll be there the next time you go and you can just uh, manipulate that data as quickly as you want. And that's it, guys. I'm going to thank you all very, very much for watching. I'm going to remind you to have fun in game and min-max your real life, and we will see you again in the mists.